you know, the, the thing that really grabbed me at first was just how funny it was. That was the thing that I responded to the most. When I read it, I thought, this is hilarious. And then I tried to imagine Steve Coogan in the role of Erasmus, and I couldn't stop laughing. And I thought, I just want to be there on the day to see this guy in person play this part. Um, and I felt like, oh, I think I can counter it in the right way so that the humor of what's on the page and the situation can work. Um, and, and that was the greatest uh, pull for me, just how funny it was. I mean, I, it wasn't so much the message, it wasn't the character, it, wasn't, it was really none of that. It was just so funny. And I liked the heart in it. I thought it was a nice story. And I hadn't seen this movie before, which was really cool too. Um, when I think back on scenes, it wasn't so much scenes as it was uh, jokes or lines. I remember really laughing hard at the moment where, when Bill, the boy, reveals this really tragic story about how his mother died and how his dad is in jail and, this, and, and that he was there to witness it. And there's this somber mood and Erasmus chimes in with, well, the good news is I've made a pear tart. And I remember reading that in the script and thinking, well, I want to do this movie. <laughs> because that's so, that kind of balance is just, it really, really hits me, you know? Working with Steve on this movie has been um, phenomenal. I ha had a great time working with him the first time we, w we worked on a movie together, though uh, what we had to do in that movie was brief. We didn't have a whole bunch, but we really kind of clicked, I think, in that movie. I think the, the experience we had, uh, we were laughing a lot during the making of it. Um, but what was really nice to discover on this was just how um, much I, f I felt as if our comedic, uh, sensibilities or our, our um, outlook toward each scene we were just kind of we were in lockstep to the point when we would sometimes come up with new lines or uh, talk about the scene um, it was very much a back and forth and it was nice because I think both of us felt as if uh, we didn't need to explain anything to the other person we just kind of could read each other's minds a little bit and that was really great that doesn't always happen Hey, so I hope you liked the video. Now stay with me as I have an interesting behind the scenes movie fact from Anchorman. Now in the famous scene where Paul Rudd speaks to Will Ferrell about Sex Panther Cologne, remember? Wow. Never ceases to amaze me. What cologne are you gonna go with? London Gentleman or... Wait. No, no, no. Hold on. Blackbeard's Delight. No. She gets a special cologne. It's called Sex Panther by Odeon. It's illegal in... Well, Paul Rudd was determined to make Will Ferrell laugh and break character, since it was always the other way around. He thought that this would be accomplished with the 60% of the time it works, every time line that he improvised. But Will fired back with doesn't even make sense without skipping a beat, once again making Paul and others break character yet again. Due to a miscommunication on set in The Hateful Eight, Kurt Russell accidentally smashed an antique guitar from 1870 instead of a prop. The dog who played Toto in The Wizard of Oz received a higher salary than most of the people who played Munchkins. And lastly, Michael Caine was so terrified of Heath Ledger's Joker in The Dark Knight that he forgot his lines in the first scene they shot together. Do you know any other cool facts? Let me know below. And remember, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. Bye-bye.